The Invisible Lion, created by Benjamin Fry. These animated drawings are taken from the illustrations in my book, The Invisible Lion. Each drawing is accompanied by a short explanation of the idea it illustrates. If you want more information on each, then I recommend reviewing the blog at theinvisiblelion.com or reading the original book itself. Our brains are divided into three parts, the human brain, the mammal brain, and the reptile brain. These layers of the brain have built up over the course of our evolution. Roughly speaking, the reptile is responsible for the freeze response, the mammal is in charge of fight or flight, and the human runs our social engagement system. This diagram represents the gears in our response to threat, which we cycle through in reverse evolutionary order in response to increasing the threat. Social engagement is at the top of the ladder, where we make friends to avoid threat. When this fails, we become vigilant to increase our awareness of threat in the environment. When the threat is real, immediate, and all else has failed, we fight or flight. Finally, when that doesn't work, we freeze. The horizontal line in this graph represents time and the vertical line represents the activation of our sympathetic nervous system, the one we use to respond to threat. When threatened, our activation goes up or gets charged and then returns to normal homeostasis once the threat has passed. At its resting state, the nervous system is not activated or charged to respond to threat. Once there is a threat, Activation happens and the nervous system is charged. Once the threat has passed, our activation goes down and the energy from the response is discharged, bringing it back to square one. When the body is overwhelmed by its own response to a threat, it hits a sort of red line that it simply cannot go beyond. This is a problem because the threat is still there but the part of this graph above the red line is no longer possible to get to. When a threat is overwhelming and our activation tips over this red line, we need to take a break. Our threat response freezes, and then when it is safe again, it all starts up in exactly the same place, carrying on as it would have if it had not stopped at all. The blue circles in the diagram represent the frozen activation in response to a threat. We look like we are not activated because we're not doing anything, but this is like a car which is not moving, even though its brake and accelerator are both fully pressed. The blue blobs represent this potential energy, the surge in activation which will happen when the brake is lifted. Once we feel safe again, this is what happens, and then we discharge the stored energy. From left to right, we have a gazelle at the watering hole with a relaxed nervous system. A lion arrives and the gazelle is activated into fight or flight. The lion catches the gazelle and is about to eat it. So the gazelle goes over the red line and freezes. The lion is distracted from his kill and so the gazelle survives, which triggers the discharge of its stored up activation. The gazelle returns to rest and goes back to the watering hole. The discharge can be over in a minute or two, and the gazelle's nervous system returns to rest, homeostasis, as if nothing has happened. But what if the gazelle could see and analyze everything that is happening? Take each box in isolation and see how that would look to the gazelle. In box one, it is calm in a calm place. In box two, it is running from a threat. In box three, it is overwhelmed by being about to be eaten. In box four, it is running from a threat, but there is no threat. If you add in this self-awareness, then suddenly everything which had evolved to happen for millions of years doesn't make sense. And for a human, that's a problem, a threat even.
If you add in a new threat, just as the gazelle is trying to discharge the energy of an old threat, then the blue squiggly line, the charge, isn't fully released or discharged. There's been no opportunity for it to get up over the red line and organically discharge back to its normal resting state. It can't get back to square one, homeostasis. Without getting back to square one, homeostasis, if a second line appears, we will react more quickly and get more charge sooner than is ideal for dealing with the threat, the dotted line. We add into this second reaction the unfinished charge from our first threat, and that causes our charge, or blue line, to climb too quickly, reaching overwhelm before we've had a chance to have our optimal fight or flight response. When we don't finish responding to the first threat, and then the second threat, our response to every subsequent threat gets more and more dysfunctional. This is a vicious circle because we reach overwhelm more and more quickly, thus creating more and more charge to discharge later. After a while, our nervous system no longer works at all. It simply leaps around from high states of activation to overwhelm freeze. This is the modern plague of anxiety and depression. Once our nervous system is dysregulated, we can no longer smoothly respond to any threat in the beautiful way that millions of years of evolution prepared us for. We have gone from a smooth analog response to threat to an on-off digital response to threat. On the left is the ideal flow of reactions by the brain. The reptile and the mammal can react and the human brain allows a reaction to happen. You are watching this to make that possible. On the right is what actually happens most of the time when we try to discharge energy to an earlier threat that we can no longer see. The human brain suppresses the organic reptile and mammal reactions. If the body feels like it is responding to a threat, but there is no threat to be seen, then it can be very tempting to find a threat on the outside. This plays havoc with modern life. In every area from our relationships to politics, we are in the habit of inventing imaginary lions to make sense of our bodies. And our human mind can be very convincing. The lion, however, is real. It's just in the past and therefore currently invisible until you learn how to look properly. When we are dysregulated, we collect a lot of unfinished responses to threat. This is called our baggage. The red squiggle represents this baggage. Baggage is the accumulation of unfinished business that we carry in our nervous system. If you haven't finished dealing with a previous threat, it becomes baggage. And like the name suggests, you carry it around with you. Baggage can come from any adverse experiences which overwhelmed us and which therefore we have not yet finished reacting to. The green arrow in the diagram represents a trigger. A trigger is anything that activates an earlier unfinished response to an earlier threat. Triggers are very personal and so different things trigger different people. If you were bitten by a dog when you were younger, for example, and didn't discharge your body's response to that fully when it happened, the experience may be stored in your body. If you hear a dog barking at a later stage, this might trigger you to go back to those unfinished responses, such as fight or flight, which might seem unnecessarily exaggerated responses to a third party watching you and the dog. The big red arrow represents your reaction to a trigger hitting your baggage. An overreaction is a response to a stimulus or trigger that is of greater intensity than the intensity of the stimulus itself. If someone tells me that a picture I drew is bad and I scream at them for saying so as if my life is in danger, that is an example of an overreaction. This is a response to a stimulus that is significantly less than the intensity of the stimulus itself. 
if I yell at you for something you didn't do and you don't react at all, then you are likely to be underreacting. From the outside, this person might seem completely calm, but inside they are anything but calm. Usually they are clamped shut, hiding all of their reactions because, and perhaps quite rightly, they are worried that they will explode. A response to a stimulus that is in proportion to the threat level of the stimulus itself is just right. It is the ideal reaction instead of an overreaction or underreaction. In the fairy tale of Goldilocks, she tested all of the beds, chairs, and porridge of the three bears, with each being either too much, too little, or just right. So when your nervous system is not triggered, you don't have a reaction, you have a Goldilocks response, which is just right. So there are three different types of reaction to a trigger. On the left, an underreaction, in the middle, an overreaction, and on the right, a just right or Goldilocks reaction. The blue shield represents a boundary around our baggage. This reduces the impact of a trigger, represented by the green arrow. So it might go down from a 3 out of 10 to a 1 out of 10. This blue shield represents containment, which is how we manage our reactions to triggers, the red arrow. If our reaction without containment was a 9 out of 10, and if we can manage to hang on to some of that energy, then maybe we can get that down to 6 out of 10, which is perhaps closer to the intensity of the original trigger. Here we see how the barriers of boundaries and containment create a circle. It becomes a whole shield around our nervous system, creating boundaries to our triggers and containment to our reactions. If our reaction without boundaries or containment was a 9 out of 10, then if we are really lucky, we can manage to get it down to a 3 out of 10. We do this in part by reducing the intensity of the trigger, a boundary, to 1 out of 10, and then by hanging on to some of our reactive energy, containment, thus getting a 6 reaction to a 3 out of 10. This turns out to be perfect. A 3 for a 3. Goldilocks. This holding for our nervous system is analogous to the way that a mother ideally holds her baby. The baby gets to grow up shielded and comforted, and slowly over time this holding is internalized. Something magical happens and the dysregulation of an infant, not really baggage yet, but it looks the same, becomes held by the infant's own emerging strength. This is the benefit of a good childhood with a secure attachment. This is what secure attachment actually means. When we practice boundaries and containment, we move from the diagram on the left to the diagram on the right, we become a simulation of a Goldilocks reaction to all our triggers, looking to the outside world as if we have no baggage at all. This is a great start. If we fail with either of our boundaries or containment, there is a knock-on reaction to the rest of us. The broken blue circle illustrates how the full shield is a bit like a soap bubble. One hole and the bubble pops meaning that a failed boundary pops our containment and vice versa. On the left is a well-regulated nervous system, and on the right is an overreactor or dysregulated nervous system. This relationship is better for the overreactor, but wearing on the Goldilocks. It can be tolerated in short bursts. The triggers become bigger and bigger if we animate the diagram below. One person's reaction becomes the next person's trigger. These relationships are volatile and difficult to sustain. There are little to no reactions in this relationship. 
the boxes around the baggage represent the lack of a reaction, but instead internalization. Such relationships often become sterile and drift apart. Here we can see that even an overreaction elicits little or no response from an underreactor. This can become an abusive relationship, especially if the lack of reaction triggers the overreactor. Sadly, the lack of reaction from the underreactor means that they don't have the mobilization to leave. Here we can see a well regulated nervous system with an underreactor. This will begin to wake up the underreactor, but might put the Goldilocks to sleep. Two well regulated nervous systems working together. This is pleasurable and sustainable. The point of boundaries and containment is to fake this until you can make it. That's how dysregulated people learn to have functional, healthy, and enjoyable relationships. Both nervous systems could be over or under reactors, but now have boundaries and containment to simulate well-regulated nervous systems. To begin to restore our nervous system back to a place of regulation, we want to reach the diagram on the right from the one on the left. This allows us to begin to look like someone with no baggage. Once our nervous systems feel safe, we can practice getting back to our mammal brain and using its automatic connection to our past to allow us to safely discharge the unfinished reactions to earlier threats. Visit theinvisiblelion.com to find out more about The Invisible Lion and the resources which go with it, including treatment ideas, further reading, related publications, videos, and blogs. You can find out more about his life and his work at benjaminfry.co.uk.